Hello everybody, this is the Retro Bear back with a brand new episode of Barely Played and we are this time on the PlayStation 1 which I think is the first time we've been on this system for this relatively short series so far. Um, thanks very much indeed for your company today, I uh, hope you're all well and hope you enjoy this. Um, and it's a bit of a classic platformer from back in the day, there's a well-worn phrase if ever I've used one before and I have used many. Um, I first came across this game uh, on the Mega Drive of all things, but it was known as Mickey Mania and it was, uh, I think, brought out to coincide with Mickey Mouse's I don't know, 50th, no, not 50th 60th, 70th 65th birthday or something like that I can't quite remember, 1993 I think it was and then we got an updated version on the Playstation 1, which is what we're playing now uh, courtesy of Psygnosis and Traveller's Tales, and it's a platform game based around, as it says there on the screen, the timeless adventures of a certain Michael Mouse. And what is immediately apparent about this game is that it's an incredibly attractive uh, graphical masterpiece. Uh, even back in 1993, running on the uh, Mega Drive and also on the Super Nintendo, of course, uh, it was quite an impressively uh, uh, sort of achievement, an impressive achievement to get a game of that quality onto there. And as you'll see from here, um, the PlayStation really sort of enhances that a bit further. So this came along probably um, about five, four or five years after the PlayStation, uh, the Super Nintendo version. Not quite sure. And the idea is you play Mickey Mouse going through various phases of his career. We're starting with Steamboat Willie, of course, the first sound, uh, cartoon with synchronised sound. Should get that right because there's a few cartoons that came up with, with sound before that. And then it sort of moves on to uh, a couple of other these cartoons. It's basically, you're sort of playing cartoons. You can see here that they sort of concentrate the gone back to the original uh, sort of graphics of the, the old days. So you've got the 1928 black and white. I mean, you know, a little hair in the top right hand corner getting stuck under the frame of the camera, the little line going across there, all adding to it and it, it just captures that feel of it. They say really sort of nailed this from pretty much the first impression. And just to watch the reaction here for Mickey seeing himself, you know, as we all know from watching Doctor Who, you've never crossed uh, the space-time continuum like that. All sorts of horrible things could happen. And there we go. And again, love the contrast of it. You've got sort of modern-day Mickey going back X number of years into black and white Mickey. And yeah, it's uh, it's great. The little touches there, you can just see sort of Mickey moving the boxes and pushing and sort of, yeah. It's high-quality game. And this is exactly what, uh, you know, that sort of system would be expected to put on back then. Uh, it was very much expected of it. Of course, now, prior to this, Mickey had been in a couple of games. Um, the Castle, the Illusion series, Castle Illusion, World of Illusion. Um, another one as well, which I can't remember. And I think Mickey and the Magical Quest, wasn't it, as well? All those sort of games which came. And most of those were sort of done by not Disney. It's all more surprising. So, once Disney started doing games like The Lion King and The Aladdin, etc., then this was when they sort of started cutting their teeth on it and they finally got the hang of it. And all of a sudden, we start getting games of this quality. A uh, little bit of a difference between this one and the cartridge version in the fact there's a little bit of a load time in between each sort of end of screen. It's a little, little annoying. Um, and I'm really sort of struggling with this because this is the first time I've played this game probably in about 10, 15 years. So, You'll have to excuse the really rotten gameplay because I'm getting absolutely mullered at the moment. Uh, top left hand corner you've got your um, live count, uh, so you get uh, three lives and also uh, five fingers. So every hit will see the glove lose a finger. Top right hand corner is uh, a marble bag, so the little black dots you're collecting along the way are marbles. You can throw those uh, at the um, bad guys along the way as you go. The stars um, are there to sort of uh, replenish your fingers. I never thought I'd say that. I don't know. Uh, and of course, you'll notice there that you, you can sort of interact. So, for example, by jumping on the parrots, you'll be able to sort of spring up, and you will need to know that as I fall off the platform there. Uh, in typical retro bear fashion, playing really, really badly. So you can sort of make your way up the, that particular building by jumping on the parrots, using them to springboard to higher levels. So those are the marbles again, so just collect those. Basically everything in this game is trying to hurt you. Uh, and I think what I should be doing there is actually ducking, there is that you sort of press down, you duck. 
Um, I don't think he's in this game. Or he is, I think he is. He's, does Donald make an appearance later in this game? I'm not sure if he does or not. I know Pluto does. Uh, talking about the sort of various stages of the level, we've got this one here, the next one you'll, you've got a uh, um, uh, 1933 Mickey Mouse cartoon called The Mad Doctor, which I don't think I've seen, but uh, apparently it's quite a famous Mickey Mouse cartoon. Uh, then you've got uh, Lonesome Ghost, Moose Hunters, um, and I think The Prince and the Pauper towards the end. Also the uh, Mickey and the Beanstalk as well, which I think is about as far as I got with this game. I didn't get all the way through it initially. Uh, the little rocket there signifies a, a checkpoint in the level. Uh, you've got sort of a um, spring device there to lift you a bit further up. Now it's taken me a little while to work out what to be doing here. Because obviously I've got to get up to the next level. You'll notice a couple of little bells. Uh, just be jump up the screen again at the top of the screen there. Just rung the first one. Uh, you'll uh, that'll become apparent towards the end because there's uh, four of those along the way. I think and you've got to make sure they've all been knocked and rung, otherwise you won't be able to go to the end of the level. Now, uh, of course, Mickey's being sarcastic. Uh, like like Sonic tapping his foot, Mickey sort of stands there and checks his watch like the little annoying little toe rug that he is. Never a Mickey Mouse fan. There we go. So we've drunk the bells, and now we've got um character known is Peg Leg Pete, although he does appear to have both legs in this one. I think Peg Leg Pete came a bit later on. We see he's, he's, yes, I've shot myself. he's chewing some sort of chewing gum. And he'll spit it at you. But see there, that sign in the background, ring bells and points back to where you should have gone. That's what you should do. And the idea is you knock him out and then you sort of use him to bounce up onto those boxes. So there you go, springboard off. And you can see we're going into colour now. So we've knocked the bad guy over and everything is now becoming colour. This is really annoying because you've got boxes coming down that, you know. You've got no, again, you've got to work out the pattern. Uh, which I haven't done because that one squashed me flat. Ah uh, dear, you'd have thought, you know, would I'm sort of playing this at the same time, but I'm not. I'm, I, I do the, these commentaries afterwards, because I can never remember what I did at the time. I was going to try and get through to the end of the level here, because I can go up there and try and get other bits and pieces, but I'm not going to. Obviously, just be aware that these boxes you jump on will sort of drop as you go along. And I hate platform games that require you to do precision jumping like that. They really do annoy me. Right, so this is the end of the first bit here. What you have to do is knock these cogs out using the marbles. Um, they've got two at the bottom, two at the top, and also using those springs there as well to increase your jumping ability. And therefore, you can fire ones at the top there. They'll take about six, five or six shots each. Obviously, the uh, crates are dropping bombs as well, which, are, you know, as we all know from bombs, they're not good things. They will hurt you. But you can see what I mean about, about how graphically wonderful it looks. I mean, you know, again, Mickey looks absolutely superb. The animation is great. It's got the, the Mickey Mouse bounce. Uh, everything about it is it, just just a really sort of uh, great game. I mentioned the, the Mega Drive and the SNES version. I've just mentioned in the PlayStation 1 version, you'll notice in the title card that uh, the image I've chosen for that one is the Platinum. There we go. Uh, Mickey Mouse has reached the end of the level. I'll just fill in here while we get, we we'll move to the next one. Um, but yeah, it, it's a platinum cover. The, the platinum version of this game is incredibly, incredibly easy to pick up. It's not rare at all. The one that is very difficult to pick up is the uh, black label double disca. Now I did manage to uh, pick this up, but the reason it's a double disc is there's one disc for the game, and there's also an audio CD which released at the same time was packaged in with it. Uh, and my copy was missing out, and also, more annoyingly, the fact that the uh, disc inside it was actually the platinum disc, not the actual black label disc. So, if you do manage to get hold of the double disc, you've done very, very well. It's not a tricky, not an easy one to track down. This one. Um, so, yeah, so we are playing a combination of a, a platinum disc and a black label label thing uh, box. Right, uh, level two then, so this is the Mad Doctor, and as you can see, things are taking a turn for the scary here. I'm not sure if the Mad Doctor itself was a black and white cartoon and whether it was colour. I can't quite remember, and again you can see, just look at the, the animation on, the, on this here, we know it's Disney, I mean it's going to be quality, um, but... Yeah, now what you remember as well, once you've, once you've shot the skeleton, those bones that drop down, um, there you go. 
if they make a connection with you, they will sort of knock a, a finger off your life bar at the top, so you've got to be incredibly careful. And also, don't take those little um, knives on the wall there, as we come to it here, for granted, because they fall down as you get closer, so you've got to be really, really careful. It, it's sort of what they call muscle memory, I think, and I, 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 it's one of, I, I call it rem remembering. Uh, it's a bit easier to, to go from. And this skeleton here doesn't want to uh, sort of jump down like the rest of these ones will cause problems. But yeah, it's, it's, it's again, it, I just love how this game looks, how it sounds, how it plays. Uh, is there a criticism of this game? Probably, yes, yeah, some of the jumping is a bit sort of mad. Um, there's a level before you get to this, which is really sick. There are some tricky bits in there. There are some bits which probably should be a lot trickier than they are. The Moose Hunters level I mentioned before, where you have to sort of run towards the screen. This is probably around about the same time, if not... Now, that would have been before, because it was on the original game, wasn't it? Uh, this, that would have been before um, Crash Bandicoot used to run towards the screen on the back of a polar bear. So there's, a, a, um, there's a, a level like that where you're running away from the, from the moose, having to jump over stuff. It's actually very, very well done. It's 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 really, really good. But yeah, some of the the jumps are a bit sort of. You'll see on the next bit. On the um, it's roll. It's not the roller coaster. It's such the the sort of um, mine level, very, very brief sort of thing. You'll just see how sort of precision you need to make things and remember where things are because the, the, some of these things can get a little bit tricky. But on the whole, I mean, if you haven't played this game, and I can't imagine many too, too many people wouldn't have played this game, because if you were into your 16-bit stuff, and then you're into the uh, the sort of CD-based consoles uh, later on, it would have been hard to miss this game. It really would be. It's it's, it's, it's tricky to pick, but they said the Platinum version, there's it's enough versions of it around, and this is the one I'm on about. You've got to make sure that you know, you're jumping from one to the other, jumping over... Um, ducking under sort of uh, buzz saws, jumping over those spiky things, and also remembering to get off your uh, mine car and clear the uh, sort of molten gravy there. Managed to get through that with a lot of life lost, really. <laughs> I think I remember. I think this is the second or third time I played it. But you know, I do. No, don't sometimes I don't record it first time. That's that's gotta be honest. Gotta be honest with you. I don't record it sometimes first time because it's a bit uh, it's a bit embarrassing. A couple of goes you get at it, but that's probably about the best I did it, but sort of lost a lot, lot of life for it anyway. So that's it, Mickey's World Adventure here on the PlayStation One. Um if you haven't got it, go and get it. You can say you can get it Mega Drive, you can get it on the Super Nintendo as well. Uh, definitely worth your while. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, tick that notification bell for more stuff that comes up, uh, because there's all sorts of different things going on, on this channel all the time, and it'll be great to have your support. In the meantime, this is the Retro Bear uh, saying, Hello, Pluto, and uh, we'll see you again very, very soon for another episode of Something or Other. Until then, do take care, and bye for now. <laughs>